This new P. Diddy case is unbelievable. And it's going to keep on coming because this guy, once he's been arrested, now the people who were afraid, the victims. And I'll be quite honest, probably people that are just trying to get a buck are like, now it's time to go find a lawyer and sue P. Diddy's ass because he did some things with some asses. You see this headline here. Diddy sued. You raped me with a TV remote. For those who don't know, P. Diddy's history goes way back. Way, way back. He had a beef with a lot of people. Tupac being the biggest. Tupac is my favorite artist of all time. I know his history frontwards and backwards. Allegedly, P. Diddy had him killed. Allegedly, P. Diddy had him shot. He made a song called Hit Him Up. It is the number one diss rap song of all time. He goes directly at P. Diddy, directly at Biggie. And so after P. Diddy, or after Tupac releases this, this song, P. Diddy becomes enraged. To pay back a woman for telling him he believed he had something to do with Tupac's murder. P. Diddy raped a woman with a remote. What the? Allegedly. So, the story goes. Uh, Ashley Parham. And I'm about to tell you, you're about to see who the Jessaline Maxwell is of this world. P. Diddy praise to Lucifer? Yeah. P. Diddy talk. Hell yeah. So, I'm about to tell you who the Jessaline Maxwell. Who's Jessaline Maxwell? The Epstein, the person who Jeffrey Epstein helped get all the women and all this gross stuff. You're about to see it who I think it is in a second. You're going to hear a lot more of this woman's name. And once again, if you know somebody who's really into this P. Diddy case, tag them. Make sure to give them a heart. Make sure to give them a like. So, the bad Ashley Parham claims that Diddy sexually assaulted her in a gangbang style rape after she dissed him on a FaceTime call. According to the lawsuit obtained by TMZ, Parham met a friend of Diddy's at a bar in February of 2018. He called Diddy on FaceTime, boom. But Parham says she wasn't impressed by the man's famous friend telling Diddy to his face that she thought he played a part in Tupac's death. This is all part of the case that is being alleged. Parham claims Diddy told her she would pay for her Tupac comment and overall dismissal of him. And she says one month later, Diddy's friend set her up for Diddy to rape her. In the suit, Parham says the man met her at the bar, invited her over to his home, and when she was there, who shows up? P. Diddy. She thought she'd never seen him in person. She says P. Diddy held a knife to the side of her face and said that he would give her a glass go smile. Who the fuck says that shit? Except evil villains. Glass go smile. I'm telling you, P. Diddy is a legit villain. Nobody says the words glass go smile. So, Parm claims that Diddy's top consultant, this is who I think, allegedly, I have no real facts, this is just my assumption, who I think Diddy's Jessaline Maxwell is. Kristen Korn. This lawsuit claims that Diddy's top consultant, Christina Corum, was there too. And KK told Diddy not to cut Parm's face because they could sell her to potential clients for sex? What the fuck? Parham claims KK then threatened to ship her off anywhere in the world and that her family would never see her again.
This is what villains say and do. If a quarter of this is true, it's horrendous. This is who she is. This is who a lot of people are saying is P. Diddy's Jessalyn Maxwell, the person that would set these females up, the person that would run their business. She was with his right-hand man for eight years. Literally, that's what Diddy says. I don't know what I would do without her. Think about that. Now, guys, it gets real, real heinous here. So I hope we don't have any real sensitive people. In the in the in the case, Parham claims Diddy took off her clothes, removed the knife from her face, and then got a bottle of liquid from a large fanny pack and covered her body in it. She says Diddy and KK tried to insert something into her and they referred to it as an IUD but it malfunctioned and then Diddy picked up a TV remote and inserted it these allegations man Param claims Diddy told her that her life was in his hands and that he could take her, she would never be seen again. Do you understand? You know, and once again, this is her, this is what she's saying. What the fuck must have felt like? To, to, I mean, not only just the, the sheer terror of somebody doing this to you, but then you're looking up and you're like, yo, this is the more money, more problems guy. She then says that two other men raped her as well. After the, the rape, this is what the claim is saying. Diddy and her buddies left her limp body inside the home as they went to the backyard to smoke some weed and cigarettes. She says finally, when she regained her bodily function, she grabbed a knife and an oversized shirt and tried to leave. Diddy grabbed her. Surprised, not enough drugs to take her out. Parham claims Diddy told her that he hadn't had... Oh, I can't even... I don't even want to say any of this. But it's just horrendous. He 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 does... It, this is just very similar to, to what we've seen him do time and time again. Violence. Threats. Kidnapping. Drugs. Extortion. She says she reported the rape to the Walnut Creek Police, but she was told law enforcement agency had opened an active investigation into they hadn't done it or had opened it. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? I'm I'm this is not going to be ending anytime soon. You think the pig. Haynes. Awful. I think the penguin has more morals than P. Diddy. The penguin wouldn't do what P. Diddy just did. And I have some cinnamon toast crunch while I talk about this, guys. I think I believe singing involving him. Hmm? 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 Well, how has this been going on for so long? Well, it's how gangsters run, man. Imagine this. He was a billionaire. He had connections. When you have connections, you have to think about where you're at and then build out, right? Because that's what major gangsters do. How, how the gangster families run back in the day was they had they had connections all the way down um, the line. So for him, he had local police connections. Then he had local judges. Then he had state and federal judges. Then he had um, congressmen. 
And then let's say that you were involved in the music industry. Let's say you were an up-and-coming artist. Hey, I want to make it. And you get involved, and, you, and next thing you know, you go to a party, and you're, and P. Diddy says, hey, if you want the next record, you're going to sleep with me. And you're a female, and you're young, you're a guy, you're young. I don't know. I mean, I, I wouldn't have done it because I'm, I don't need a record that bad. <laughs> But you go like, oh, okay, I get, and then and then he does it, and he does horrendous things, and he films it, and then he says, oh, I got you, because if you think you're gonna get away from me, I'll release this tape, and I'll show everybody what a whore you are, I'll show everybody what a piece of shit you are. Now I got you. It's what mafia people would do to uh, politicians and police officers. They would get them hooked up with hookers and. But get them drugs and they say, you're dirty now. I got you. Does that make sense? And then you grow more power. And then you and then you then you do charitable acts. Because the, the duality of a villain a lot of times is that they do a lot of good. They do a lot of good. P. Diddy gave a lot of back to the community because they have to cover up, you know, these shameful things that they do. So that's how you get away with it for a long, long time. And then it takes somebody really with a lot of guts like Cassie, who was abused and beat up allegedly and, and was able to get out there and do it. So that's how you get away with doing it. For, and, then, and then you have a lot of people helping you, quite frankly. You know? Los, what if Tupac... Uh, ass. Oh, I'd say yes. <laughs> I mean, come on. Sexy. <laughs> uh, we should have Believe Nas with Diddy when he's saying you can hate me now. Oh, yeah. Was that against me? No, I thought that was the Jay-Z beef. Oh, no, that was Ether. When you have that much power, you need to be checked. And it wasn't. Well said, Aline. You know, there's that phrase and I'll probably mess it up but I love it it says it's like absolute power corrupts god damn it I knew I was gonna mess it up it's like absolute power corrupts 100% of the time or something it's a good line you guys can find it put it up there <laughs> you know and now that these interviews are coming out um You can see these interviews, the little, the way this guy spoke, the way that he talked about other people. You know, he, he changed his name a million times. You know that, right? He was Sean Puff Daddy Combs, it's not, and then he was P. Diddy, then he was Diddy, then Ready, he, he was Brother Love. And I've noticed that a lot of these guys who do heinous shit, like Kanye's also done a bunch of fucking horrible, said and done a bunch of horrible shit. They change their names a lot. I think it's like, they, they're like, oh, if I change my name, I shed that, that other person. I don't know. But it's going to get deeper and deeper. Now, I do want to say that there are a bunch of people out there, like Jaguar, right? The people talking a lot about the P. Diddy thing. And you got to take a lot, not everything with a grain of salt, because for sure when, when, oh, there it is. There's that line. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. No doubt. Look, I mean, I think another guy right now that is in this world is Conor McGregor. I know it's just a random shout out of Conor McGregor, but like when I think of absolute power, I feel like when you have absolute power over your own self, like nobody can tell you what to do. I don't have that life. I don't have that life. I do something, there's going to be people that I affect and they're going to be like, you can't do that. And I'd be like, oh yeah, I can't do that. I'm a father. I'm a husband. I, I need to make money. I need to do this. You know, like, but there are some people that that's gone. Like the P. Diddy's and the, the Conor McGregor's, the Elon Musk's. You know, they just have no, I know they're all different, you know, but Snoop saying fuck Kanye on the radio yesterday. Ooh, I didn't see that. I like to hear that because I'm kind of on the F Kanye kick right now. 
Barbara, you are a nice person. But stuff like this makes you mad. It shouldn't make you mad. It's upsetting. Um, now, I will say this as far as... And I'll change the banner to put up there because people do like saying... What P. Diddy parties were like? Let's add that banner because this is what I think the P. Diddy parties were like. All right. You know how they're trying to say, like, everybody who went to the party is involved? No. I've been to some crazy ass parties. And I've been to some parties with a lot of famous people. And I've been to some parties with not famous people. And I've been to parties where I left early. And I've been to parties where I was the last one there. And the way that usually things work. So like, you know, obviously you see all these. I don't think every celebrity that went to P. Diddy's white party is culpable. Okay? For many of you who maybe like to party back in the day. You do understand that when you go to a party, no matter what party, if it's a real good ass party, I'm talking one, you get dressed up, you know, fun, whatever. There's a party at the beginning, right? And if it's gonna be a good one, okay, party at the beginning, let's say that's the white party at P. Diddy says. I never went to the white party, never got invited to the white party, quite frankly. But I have been to the Playboy Mansion party, but I have been to premieres, of Hollywood movies, I have been to some sick ass parties. Now, the exactly DTF, the parties would have thousands of people go to them. That is not thousands of people gangbanging and doing horrific stuff that is being alleged. No, 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 no. So we got the party. Let's say all of us. All of the toppers got invited to the P. Diddy party. We all are there. We're, oh my God, we're at P. Diddy's party. Oh my God. P. Diddy. Oh, look what I spelled. P. D. I. D. I. So. Now, P. Diddy is not really having fun at that party. He's there. He's on his mic. He's looking around. He's picking out who's going to go to the next level. Like a video game. Think of a horrendous video game, okay? Level one is the white party. And there's kids walking around and whatever, okay? But then just like every other party, guys, you understand, if you don't do drugs, you don't party, those people are not going to include you into their party. You're not even going to know that half the people there are on yay. You're not going to know that some people are on molly. You're not going to know this person's high as hell. They're not going to include you in it. But they're going to tell the other people that are partying. And that party continues later on into the night. So let's say the white party ends at 11 or 12. It's pretty late. For me personally, if I'm at a party at 12 right now these days, wow. I am partying. Especially when you don't drink. That is late. Yes, Julie. He's scouting. Scouting. DTF, Triple T did go to a party. He's going to tell you more about that on another show. So now people leave. And now we got the first layer of the transition into the, the, the last party is where that crazy stuff happens. The last part of the party. If you're there at 2 a.m., you're, you're going to see that. And, and that's going to be a residual and people brought in towards the end. And see, if majority of those people knew the rumors and what was going on, but their careers meant more, or careers meant more to them. Uh, I, th I think, yeah, with some, I think more people, I think some people really knew what was going on. And then I think a lot of people just thought, oh, they just get freaky deaky in there. And then some people really knew the, the horrendous shit. Um, this show is the only place you get your PDP Diddy news. Awesome. We'll see, right? Because if the rumor... No, it's not rumors. There are videos right now of a very huge pop star. Something happening to him by P. Diddy that's being trying to be sold on the black on the dark net. So, P. Diddy's gonna... He's talking. He's gonna talk. 
He's going to say whatever he has to say to reduce his, his prison time. I mean, he's not, he's not going to get out of jail anytime soon. But it will be interesting. Is Jay-Z involved? I mean, I don't know. I tend to think if you're hanging around somebody, if, you, if there were so many multiple pictures of me and somebody hanging out, You gotta be culpable a little bit, right? Like, who are those people? DJ Khaled, Jay Z, French Montana, Meek Mill. Yeah, yeah, it was there. It was there. I just don't know how much people really, really, really knew. You know? We'll see, though. We shall see. That is what's happening in the new P. Diddy case. Okay, now we gotta switch it up. Now we gotta switch it up. Now we're gonna do something a little, we're, we're sticking with Bill, but we're gonna do something a little different, okay? Do something a little different because I found this and thought it was so cool. 